Star Wars is one of the world's most famous film franchises. One of the most famous effects from this series is the hyperspace or the light speed effect. Today, we'll be recreating this in HitFilm Express. Today's tutorial is going to be rated 5 stars out of 5, because there will be quite a bit of assumed knowledge. The similar effect can be done in the pro version with just one effect, but since this effect isn't available in the express version, we're going to have to have some workarounds. I should also just say that I am in the compositing workspace instead of the editing workspace, that makes it easier to look at with a big viewer. So I'm just going to create a new composite shot, 1080p 60, 30 seconds. This is going to be our first shot where we have the actual proper hyperspace effect. We'll do the spaceship flying away second. The first thing that we're going to need is the actual star field. So we can get an image of Google Images if we want, or we can create a new plane, a black plane, apply the fractal noise effect, and then thanks to some handy presets found in this new express version of HitFilm, we can just go down to star field and we've got a nice star field. You can change the exposure to make them brighter or the offset to make more or less stars. The base of this effect is the parallax effect, so just search up for it and then just drag it onto your video after the fractal noise. Opening it up, just select invert map and mess around with the depth to see what it does. You'll notice it pulls the black plane backwards and it, it kind of extrudes all the white stars out. We're just going to go to 28 seconds into this 30 second composite shot, so that we are 2 seconds from the end of the shot. We're just going to set a keyframe for the depth to be 0, and then at the end we're just going to ramp it all the way up to 200. Now we're going to go into the interpolation, which is something I'll go into a little bit more detail about. The interpolation is how the value changes between the two keyframes. So currently they're constant, which means they go straight from 0, and then just constantly to 200. But we want it to be in more of a curved shape, to go gradually from 0 to 200. If you watch some of the actual hyperspace effect from the Star Wars films, you'll notice it kind of goes, extrudes out in a small burst first, and then it kind of comes out into the full hyperspace effect. We're not going to be doing that in today's video, because that would just mean some extra, uh, more interpolation, which I'm not going to be bothered to explain, but if you want to do that, you can. But today, I'm just going to do the normal curved interpolation. We're just going to open up the value graph here. Make sure our playhead's near the end. We can just zoom in, highlight both of these keyframes, and just select Manuel Bezier here. Now, we can drag this around to create our own Bezier. On the x-axis, we have time as normal, and on the y-axis, up and down, we have the actual value. You see, from 0 to 200. If we mess around with these, we can create a kind of curve that goes like this, and this means it starts off really slow, and then finally comes into the full parallax effect. Now if you wanted to, you could do something like this, which is to have it kind of start off with that kind of first jump, but again, like I said, in today's video, we're just going to be doing something like this. You can mess around with this curve until it feels right, I'm just going to leave it at about that. Now we're just going to get this effect and press Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC four times so that we have five parallax effects. So that's two, that's one, two, three, four, five parallax effects now, and you can see that now the effect is much more pronounced. You'll notice though that it actually pulls the black paint in and it pulls all the stars back in towards the center rather than out. To combat this, we're going to apply some scale adjustments. Just open up the transform and then hit a keyframe for scale at the 28 second mark. Go to the end and just put in 160%. Actually, we're just going to make that 165. We're still in the value graph and you can see here that these are constant keyframes. We're just going to change these to be manual bezier. And we're just going to, if we show depth, we're just going to try and mimic this curve in the scale. So we're just going to, uh, let's see, adjust these points until the curve kind of matches. And here we have a pretty similar looking curve between the two. If we play it back now, we can see it kind of looks like they're coming out now instead of being pulled back in. Now we're going to apply two more effects. We're just going to add a zoom blur because while this parallax is great, it's just not really enough. 
and we could duplicate the parallax effect a whole bunch more times, but that's a bit render heavy, so we're just going to apply the zoom blur effect to apply a similar kind of effect. Once again, we're going to go to the 28 second mark and just set a keyframe for the strength to be zero. And at the end, we're just going to set a keyframe for the, uh, for the strength to be all the way up at 100. You can mess around with the interpolation any way you want, but I'm just going to make it a similar kind of curve, but perhaps even later. So it only appears until much later. And finally, we're going to add a glow because the glow is what makes it, well, colored. So we're just going to add a glow effect, and in here, just turn the threshold all the way down to 0%, turn the radius all the way down to 0%, and then in the per channel intensity, get rid of some red, get rid of some green, and add some blue. Now we're just going to mess around with the keyframing of this. I'm just going to set a keyframe at the beginning for the intensity to be 0. At the end, I'm going to set one for it to be 1.1. That's just a value I did in my previous tests. And I'm just going to adjust the interpolation here. So what I'm actually just going to do is something like this. So it kind of starts off with a glow and then becomes even more glow. So again, you can mess around with the interpolation and find some settings in these interpolation that you really like. Okay, so the next step is to add the actual cockpit image. I'm just going to do that real quick, just got this image here. I'm just going to move it around and uh, key it right now. Now we've got that keyed out, just keep in mind that I've set it to be two layers, that way I can probably key only some of it out. But now that we've got that properly keyed out, it's time to add a shake effect, because that's what will bring this all together. So add a new gray layer and just get a shake effect and just drag it on to that gray layer. Then we're going to keyframe it so that at that 28 seconds, or at least thereabouts, we're just going to set a keyframe for it to be a gentle kind of shake, around 5. I'm just going to set a keyframe for that, and I might increase the speed while I'm at it. And then at the very end, we're just going to set it to be a lot of shake. So we're just going to set this to be something like 100. And then if we go into the interpolation, we can also change this up a little bit if need be. So I might just make it a slight curve. And that's the first shot done, now we're going to move on to the second shot. So I'm just going to similarly create a new composite shot, just going to hit OK, and I'm just going to create the same star field. Once you've got the star field sorted, it's now time to add your image of your spaceship. So I've just got the back of an X-Wing right here, I'm just going to drag that on and adjust the scale until it kind of fills the frame a bit better. Then I'm just going to keyframe the scale. So I'm just going to set a keyframe here at the very beginning, a couple of frames in, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so it looks like it's kind of just flying a bit normally. And then after that, about one to two seconds in, I'm just going to set a keyframe for the scale to be zero. I'm just going to open this up, open up the transform, select all these keyframes, go to the value graph, and uh, we're now going to make them manual bezier so we can adjust the interpolation properly. So, just going to hit manual bezier right here, and I'm just going to bring these curves down so it goes away really quickly and kind of fades out. That looks pretty good. You might also want to turn on motion blur so that we get a nice motion blur effect. Now just some final touches, I'm going to add a new gray layer with some auto light flares effects. Just going to drag that on. And I'm just going to set in the hotspot generation the max number of flares to be 4. I'm just going to adjust the threshold until we get some nice flares on the lights. I'm going to change the flare type to be laser dot, and I'm just going to adjust the scale accordingly. It looks pretty good when the spaceship's just here, but when it starts to fly away, the, the lights go onto different areas. And so we're just going to adjust or keyframe the threshold so that this kind of uh, compensates for each other and we still get the light flares on the ship. And then when it gets near the end here, we're just going to keyframe the intensity so that it slowly dies away. And once you've got that done, it's time to add the final shake effect. Just add the shake effect once again, and we're just going to keyframe it similarly to how we did before. I'm just going to start it off at 100 when the spaceship flies away. And then around here, I'm just going to move it down to something like 30, and then slowly die away to something like 5. And there we have the final effect. When we put the two both together in the editor, we can see they play back pretty smoothly. 
So, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like this video, then be sure to hit the like button. If you want more videos just like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you've got any friends who might want to see this video, then be sure to share it with them. I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.